Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Oats, the giant of the cereals, presents Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. <coughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you husky! <coughs> Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Brought to you by Quaker Oats. Jed Benwood entered his cabin a short distance from Whitehorse and stomped the snow off his shoes as he spoke to his wife, Elsie, and his ten-year-old boy, Mark. Well, Elsie, I bought a new dog for my team. Too bad Snooper disappeared a few days ago, Jed. Dogs aren't very cheap up here in the Yukon. Yeah, I reckon it's just as well that no good dog Snooper did disappear. Never did take the harness very well. He was always chasing rabbits and such every chance he got. Reckon he chased one a little too far last time. Strange he didn't come back, though. Dogs usually find their way back oh, home. Oh, that dog didn't have any sense, Elsie. The rest of the team stay quiet, mind their own business. But Snooper, as Mark named him, always wanted attention. That's part of the trouble, too. The boy sort of made a pet of him, spoiled the dog. Oh, gosh, Dad, I think Snooper was smart. He wanted to be something more than just a sled dog. Oh, What's dogs good for except to pull a sled, son? Well, Sergeant Preston's dog, King, helps find crooks when he isn't leading the dog team. Oh, sure, sure. King's a special trained dog, that's why. Well, let's have supper and forget that lost dog, Snooper. Like I said before, I'm just as well pleased that he did disappear. Late that night, Mark, who slept on a couch in the main room of the cabin, was awakened by a dog whining at the door. Golly! Sounds like a dog right outside the door. Uh, I'll go find out. <laughs> Snooper, you've come back. Come on in, fella. Come on. Gosh, you're limping. Let me see that front paw. Golly, it looks like you must have been caught in a trap or something. Hey, what's going on out here? Look, Dad, it's Snooper. He's come back. One of his front legs is hurt. Oh, let me see here. <laughs> yeah, he got caught in a trap. That's what he gets for loping off after rabbits and such. I'll fix his leg right away. No matter what you do for him, he'll never be good anymore as a sled dog, Mark. I'll get rid of him tomorrow. No, please, Dad. Let me keep him. But, son, what good will he be? A gimpy-legged dog isn't worth keeping around. What is it, Jed? I heard you and Mark talking. Snooper's come back, Ma, and he's hurt. Oh. Dad said he's going to get rid of him, but I want to keep him. Now, son, no use carrying on about it. A lame dog is useless. Uh, why can't I keep him as my own? Please, Dad. Jed, let Mark keep Snooper if he wants to, at least for a while. Or what harm can it do? Well, all right, then, all right. But you have to take care of him, Mark. I'm going back to bed. In spite of the careful attention given to him by his little master, Snooper's injury left him with a lame front leg. And though as time went on it didn't seem to bother him, the dog could never quite put his weight on that one limb. He and Mark were constant and happy companions. But in spite of Mark's patient training, Snooper couldn't be broken of the habit of chasing any small animal that crossed his path. One afternoon, while Mark was playing outside with Snooper, Sergeant Preston and King approached the Benwood cabin on the way to Whitehorse. Find the crook, Snooper. Find him. No, oh, come back. Come back here. Stop chasing that rabbit. Okay. Hi, you huskies. Hello. Hello, Mark. Hi, Sergeant. Isn't that one of your father's dogs? No, he's mine, Sergeant. Briefly, the boy told the Mountie about Snooper's disappearance and of the result. Well, I'm glad your father let you keep him, Mark. So am I, sir. I notice Snooper gets around in spite of his lameness. He sure does. But I get awful discouraged sometimes trying to make him stop chasing things like he does. Oh? 
What sort of game were you playing when I arrived? Oh, I'm playing Mountie, and Snooper is my helper. Like King is yours. A Mountie, eh? Caught any crooks lately? Oh, gosh, no. We just make believe. But it's fun. I was trying to get Snooper to trail Dad. But he started right off to chase another rabbit. Well, never mind, Mark. At least Snooper is good company for you. Your father going to town? Yes, sir. Well, perhaps I'll see him there. Keep your eye out for any crooks that come this way, Constable Mark. <laughs> yes, sir. Goodbye. Bye, son. All right, King, up front. <laughs> One king! On, you husky! <laughs> we'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, mothers, next time you feed your baby, remember this. Many pediatricians are recommending good, nourishing Quaker oats for babies from the time they are three months old. So why wait till eight or nine months? You see, oatmeal has proved itself the finest source of bodybuilding protein among cereals. In tests made by a leading state university, the protein in Quaker oats is proved better for growth than that of 14 nationally known breakfast cereals, including two well-known baby cereals. Results are published in the nationally known scientific journal, Food Research. And mothers, here's a time-saving tip. To make baby's first oatmeal, just follow the easy directions on the package of Quaker Oats or Mother's Oats, which are the same. Make plenty, and then you'll have creamy, delicious, nourishing, hot Quaker Oats ready for the rest of the family, and at a cost of less than one penny a serving. So serve it every morning. Tomorrow, sure, get a package of delicious Quaker or Mother's Oats. Now to continue. Two rough-looking men sat in the cafe at Whitehorse, talking in low voices. Hey, Stucky, I found out there's a bank shipment waiting at the express office to go out. How'd you find that out, Leo? Uh, when I was heading here from the hotel, I saw the bank cashier with a guard. They were going to the express office carrying a black bag. I sort of ambled by and looked in. I saw the clerk checking some small sacks that were in the bank. Yeah, we could use some cash right now. Yeah, yeah that's what I was thinking. You uh, think we could get away with it? No reason why. We were careful. Who else was in the express office? I mean, besides the bank cashier, the guard, and the express clerk? Nobody. The clerk works in the office alone this time of day. But what's more, I saw the cashier and the guard go back to the bank just after I arrived here. I could see him through the front window. Uh, that means the express clerk is alone with that bank shipment, huh? Uh-huh. Well, what are we waiting for? Nothing, as far as I'm concerned. Good. How are we working? Now, look, we'll get the dog sled, load on a few supplies, then take the sled and leave it beside the express building. Hey, we'll have to make sure that clerk is still in there alone. Yeah, that's right. Then we'll go in and grab that shipment. Well, where do you figure on heading for after we do grab it? Make a fast getaway. We'll go to that deserted prospector shack a couple of miles up the valley, where we hid out before. You think we ought to stop so close to town? Maybe we ought to keep going in case they pick up our trail and start following now, us. I don't worry. Beginning to snow just enough to cover our trail. We'll be safe at the shack. Well, no use wasting time. Come on, let's go. All right. A short time later, the express clerk looked up as two men with their faces covered entered. Uh, reach, mister. This is a holdup. Well, well, there isn't much here for you to take. Stop lying. We came for that bank shipment. Get over to the safe and get it for us. Hurry. Come on, make it faster. I'll plug you. Sure. Sure. Hand me that black bag there. Here it is, mister. All right. You aren't going to get far when the constable hears about this. He isn't going to hear too soon. This will keep you quiet. Uh. Now, come on, Leo. Let's get out of here quick. Ten minutes later, the express clerk regained consciousness. Oh, hit. For a moment or two, he sat dazedly trying to get his bearings. And then as the full realization of what had happened came to him, he staggered to his feet. What? Bank shipment. Now I remember. They knocked me out and took that cash. I have to get help quick. The clerk, still weak from the heavy blow, staggered to the door and pulled it open. Help! Help! Hold up! Help! 
Within a few moments, several of the townsmen, attracted by the clerk's call, stood beside him excitedly, asking questions. Hey, what happened, Jake? There was a hold up? Yeah, two men. They knocked me out. Robbed the express safe. What? Got away with a big bank shipment. Uh, how long ago did it happen? Did you recognize them? Must have been about 10 or 15 minutes ago. I don't know who they were. I'll tell the constable what I remember about them. Somebody go get the constable. Hurry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't let those crooks get away with that bank shipment. Later that day, Sergeant Preston and his great dog, King, arrived in town. Went directly to the constable's office where Preston learned of the express office robbery. I just came back from the express office, Sergeant. Got a description of the crooks? Yes, there were two men. One stocky, the other slim. That's all the clerk could tell me. They struck him down just before they left. I see. Yeah, enough snow has fallen to cover any tracks they may have left. Well, that wouldn't stop King if he could get their scent. I doubt if that's possible. Why? Well, the clerk went to the door when he came to and yelled for help. A crowd was soon milling around the scene even before I got there. Oh, well, that's bad. They're useless trying to pick up any particular scent after so many have been there. Of course, we might find something outside. No, some men went around outside looking for tracks in spite of the falling snow. Huh? Well, the only thing left to do is start questioning. I doubt we'll turn up any clues to the identity of the crooks, but it's worth a try. Let's go. Come along, King. An hour later, the snow had stopped falling. Leo and Stocky took the much-traveled main north trail for some distance. Then, doubling back along a branch trail, they soon came within sight of the shack in the valley to which they were heading. Well, Stocky, everything worked our way. Enough snow fell to cover our tracks. Yeah. We stay at the shack for several days, and no one will be the wiser. I wonder how soon after we left, the constable found out about us grabbing that shipment. Long enough for us to be well away from town, I reckon. <laughs> Can't find us if there's no trail to follow. Yeah. There's a shack just ahead. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know, Leo... We came a roundabout way. But if we headed straight over that hill to the left, we'd reach the North Trail again, not too far from town. Yeah, I know. Ah, uh, here we are. Uh, oh, there. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh there. Uh, help me get the dog settled. Then we'll go in and make ourselves comfortable while we count the loot. For some time after Sergeant Preston left, Mark Benwood played with his dog, Snooper, near his father's cabin. They went inside during the snowfall... But when it stopped, the boy and dog went out to play again. An unusually large rabbit ran past them, heading toward the hill behind the cabin. Snooper immediately took off in pursuit. Snooper, come back here! Snooper! Snooper stopped a moment and looked back at his small master. He stood a moment undecided. Then he saw the rabbit toward the top of the hill resting in the snow. Snooper started on again. Snooper! Snooper, wait! Come back here! And that dog, anyway. Golly, he's gone over that hill. Now I can't even see him. Oh, well, I can see his tracks in the snow. I'll follow him and bring him back. Mark followed Snooper's tracks in the snow down the opposite side of the hill until he came to a narrow trail, which showed that a dog sled and two men had gone by. He found Snooper on the trail, sniffing at the footprints in the snow. <laughs> Snooper! I ought to let Dad give you away for running after that rabbit. Why didn't you come back when I called you? Why didn't you? Oh, it's all right, fella. Just so you don't get lost again. I wonder who made those tracks along this trail. Huh? I bet you think they're crooks, just like I do, don't you, Snooper? Find them, fella. I'm a Molly, don't you know that? Look, I even have a wooden pistol Dad made for me. Go ahead, Snooper. Find him, boy. Gosh, you sure act dumb. Come on, I'll go along with you then. And make believe you're following their scent. Come on, Snooper. Meanwhile, at the cafe, Sergeant Preston found a newcomer to town who volunteered some information. Sergeant, I heard you asking around about a slim fella and a stocky one. That's right. You see them? Well, come to think of it, I did, Sergeant. When and where? Well, I got into town about half an hour ago. Come in on the north trail. About two miles out, a couple of fellas was making fast time with a dog sled. I'd say one of them was slim and the other was sort of stocky. Might be the men that you're hunting for. Might be at that, Sergeant. It's a lead worth following, Constable. Of course, you realize the little snowfall we had would have covered any tracks they left. I know, but the snow stopped falling now. Are you thinking of trailing those two men? Yes, at least as far as Bear Creek. I'll ask about them there. Let's get the team, Constable. Come along, King. <laughs> 
On the valley trail, Mark and his dog, Snooper, moved along slowly. Snooper repeatedly interrupted their progress by chasing after small animals that happened across the trail. And Mark was forced time and again to bring him back to follow the tracks of the would-be crooks. At the Benwood cabin, Elsie Benwood decided Mark and Snooper had been outside much too long. So she went to call them in. Mark! Mark, where are you? Mark! Oh, where is that boy? Why didn't Mark come in, Elsie? I've been back from town half an hour or more. Haven't laid eyes on the boy yet. Jed, neither Mark nor his dog are in sight. I haven't seen them for quite some time, and I'm rather worried. I'll put on my things and go out to find them. Dress that boy and his gimpy-legged dog. Just when I get comfortable, he has to run off. I do hope they haven't gone far, Jed. Or they might meet a bear or a wolf or some other animal. Oh, not likely this close to town. Anyhow, I'll soon find them. No need to get upset. They can't be very far from the cabin. Oh, I hope not. Mark! Mark! I see the tracks in the snow. This dog sure made plenty of them. Jed walked slowly around, gradually circling out as he called Mark's name. Mark! But he received no answer. Finally, he saw the dog tracks and Mark's footprints heading back toward the top of the hill. I thought that youngster had more sense. He might have run into some prowling animal, sure enough, back in that valley, if he went that far. By thunder, I should get rid of that dog like I said I was going to. Well, nothing to do but go on till I sight him. Later, in the hideout shack, the two crooks, Leo and Stocky, were seated comfortably by the fire. The black bag containing the bank loot was on a bunk nearby. Uh, Stocky, I didn't think we'd really hit it like we did when we grabbed that black bag. Almost $10,000 in cash and gold dust. Yeah. <laughs> we live in clover when we finally get to where we can spend it. Hey, you hear that, Stocky? Yeah. Yeah, probably a wolf back in the hills. I know. Sounded more like a dog to me. <laughs> Lots of people have trouble telling the difference. Someone's coming this way. Yeah. There's someone calling as if to a dog. Let's look out the window. Hey, look. A youngster chasing this way after a dog. Yeah. The darn mutt's heading right for this shack. Yeah. Let's just sit tight. Maybe they'll go away. Are you crazy, fool? No boy that size would be coming through this valley alone. Maybe his old man is coming around the bend. Yeah, we'll soon find out. All we have to do is wait and watch. The two crooks stood watching out the window. They saw Mark and Snooper approaching the shack, but no one seemed to be coming after them. Leo spoke. That boy's old enough to know that someone's staying here when he sees smoke coming from the chimney. Well, what of it? Maybe he'll go right past. No. Nah. Dog's running to the door now, and the boy's following. Open the door and tell him to beat it. Use your head, Stucky. He went talking about someone being in his shack. People would get suspicious. The Monies might come up to investigate. Why, Snooper? What? Hey, you hear that? Yeah. You think he really knows what... I'll find out what this is all about. Put him up, mister. I got you covered. You can't get away from a Monie. Well, come in here, boy. We want to talk to you. Come on in. Come on, Snooper. <laughs> Yeah, now, uh, what's that you said about uh, a Mountie? I said you can't get away from a Mountie, mister. I'm a Mountie, and that's my trusty dog, Snooper. Hey, I don't get this. Wait a minute, Leo. Uh, tell us, youngster, what brings you here to this shack? Snooper and I are trailing crooks, and the trail led right to this cabin. Who told you we're crooks? Oh, I'm only playing make-believe, don't you see? Did you really make those tracks out there? What if we did... Nothing. Well, I think Snooper and I'd better be going home now. Now, wait, wait a minute. Uh, where do he live? Back over the hill, on the North Trail. We can't let him leave now if he tells about us being here. The Why money. don't you want anybody to know you're here, mister? None of your business. Take it easy, Leon. Uh, look, boy, you had no right to come here snooping like you did. Well, I wasn't snooping. I was just playing Molly. But I have to go home to supper now. Yeah. Well, maybe it'll be all right if it... Oh, there's Dad hunting for us. You watch the boy. I'll get the old man in here. Hey, you. 
What are you snooping around here for? I'm looking for a boy and a dog. Their tracks led right to the door of the shack. I'm in here, Dad. What? That's the boy. That's him. I... Hey, what are you two fellas doing here in this shack? I noticed tracks on the trail outside. Dog team and two men. Holy smoke. Maybe you two are the... <clears throat> well, I better get the boy and leave You're now. coming inside, mister. I'll have you covered. I'll come in. Sure. Sure. Golly, Dad. Why is he holding the gun on you? Are they really crooks? Be quiet, Mark. I'll sit on you. All right. You started to say something a minute ago. But maybe we're the something or other. Now, what was it? Well, just a passing thought, mister. Nothing to it. Well, he was being cagey with him, Leo. He's wise to who we are. And that's just his hard luck. All right, then. Maybe I am wise. I figure you robbed the express office in town. You're hiding out here. Golly, real crook. Shut up, you. Oh. Watch that dog, Leo. Stay away from me, you dirty mud. Tell him to stay away. Quiet, Snooper. Quiet, fella. Hey, kid. Put that mud outside. Go on. All right. Here, Snooper. Here, boy. Yeah, I'll come to the door with you. So you needn't think of slipping out yourself. All right, tell him to go out. Go out. Go out, Snooper. <laughs> Ah, uh, Stocky, help me tie these two and we'll toss them on the bunk. After that, we'll decide what to do. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. And now, here's your old friend, that famous teller of tall tales, Gabby Hayes. Hey, I want to know what you fellas and gals would do if you was ambushed by a gang of gold robbers the way I was up in the Yukon years ago. I was traveling along a lonely trail on the way to a secret gold mine. Sudden, I realized I was being ambushed by a gang of gold robbing varmints. Well, sir, they begin to close in on me. Natural, first thing I thought of was eating a bowl of nourishing Quaker roots. Them robbers didn't reckon with the super power and strength that Quaker Oats give me. Quaker Oats is a giant of the cereals. You darn tootin'. You get more strength and more energy from oatmeal than from many other whole grain cereal. So what did I do? I stretched my arms out to the side. Begin to spin around with such speed that just as the robbers made a grab for me, I whirled myself right up into the air like a helicopter and landed miles away. So, fellas and gals, take a tip from old Gabby. Be ready for anybody that starts ambushing you. Eat a good heaping bowl of delicious hot Quaker oats every morning. Or make it mother's oats. The shucks. Exactly the same. Now to continue. Sergeant Preston and the constable followed the north trail until they arrived at the Benwood Cap. Looking! Oh, you Constable, we'll ask the Benwoods if they've seen anything of the two men we're trailing. Come on. Come on, King. Stay, King. Stay, boy. Sergeant Preston, come on in. Thanks, Mrs. Benwood. Isn't Dad home? He went to hunt for Mark and his dog, Snooper. Oh? I don't know how long he'll be gone. But that... Boy and dog might lead him a merry chase before he finds them. I can believe that. We're looking for two men who may have come up this trail. A slim fellow and a stocky one. Did you see them by any chance? Well, I didn't notice, Sergeant. Several have passed on the trail, but I've been busy inside. I see. Perhaps Mark noticed them. But hard telling when he and Jed will finally get back here. Well, uh, perhaps we'd better not wait then. That's right. It'll be dark before long, Sergeant. All right. Let's go, Constable. Sorry, I couldn't be of help, Sergeant. That's all right. Goodbye. Goodbye, Sergeant. Bye, ma'am. Bye. We'll push on to Bear Creek, Constable. Wait. Look, there comes Mark's dog. We'll wait a minute and see Mark. Ah, the dog sure acts strangely. Sergeant Preston observed Snooper closely. 
The Mountie was used to the ways of dogs, and he could tell that something was wrong, that Snooper was trying to tell him something. The lame dog ran toward them, then back toward the hill. Finally, Preston spoke. Constable, something's wrong. We'll have King backtrack on Snooper's trail and try to find Mark and his father. Let's go. Up front, boy. All right, on King! Run, you husky! Later, in the shack, the two crooks had come to a decision. We'll pack up and leave here right away, Stocky. Leave these two tied up here. Start snowing again soon. They'll not be fun for some time. Right. No, no, don't leave us here. Let the boy go. The fire will go out and we'll freeze. That's your hard luck. I'll take the bag of loot out to the sled, Leo. Right. Hold it. Huh? You're not going any place. Couple of mornings. Hey, use your gun, Leo. I'll take the big guy. Quiet. Leo, standing just behind Mark, suddenly held Come his in, gun you. against the boy, saying... Hold everything, Molly. I'll plug this boy if you don't drop your guns right now. Don't let him shoot me, Sergeant. Don't let him. As Mark cried out, Snooper heard his young master and sprang forward from behind the mountain. Leo, look out. The kid's dog. At the same moment, a great gray shape moved like a streak of lightning. King, unseen by Leo, whose attention was momentarily on Snooper, sprang at the crook, grabbing him by the gun arm. Oh, oh, help! Take him away! Help! Run, King. Watch him, boy. Keep that dog away, will you? I'll untie Mark and his father. Mark and his father were soon free and uh-huh. stood by as Preston and the constable tied up the crooks and fixed Stocky's uh-huh. wound. Uh-huh. You're under arrest in the name of the Crown for armed robbery. The bank shipment is still intact in the black bag, Sergeant. Gosh, Sergeant, you came just in time. I trained Snooper to be smart like King. That's why he brought you here. Snooper's a fine dog, Mark. It was because of him that we found him. And to think I wanted to get rid of him. Snooper's good at trailing, too. He led me to these crooks, Sergeant. Oh, the little Mountie and his dog, eh? Next time I come by your cabin, Mark, I'll bring a Mountie play suit for you to wear. How's that? Dolly, that'll be fine. I'll really be like a Mountie then. We'll take you back to your cabin and get these crooks to jail. Once that's done, this case is closed. <laughs> Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. This is your friend, Aunt Jemima. Would you like to eat better for less money? Then serve delicious Aunt Jemima pancakes. A stack of golden fluffy Aunt Jemimas with good butter and syrup costs only about six cents and makes a wonderful breakfast, lunch, or supper. So serve folks stacks of Aunt Jemima pancakes Cost so little, taste so scrumptious, too. And now, here is Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston reporting for duty, Inspector. Sergeant, an Indian guide and the party he was leading are lost somewhere in the mountains above Dominion Creek. It may mean murder. Any special instructions, sir? No, Sergeant. Just find the members of the party and the murderer, if there is one. Sergeant Preston faces death on a storm-swept mountain. Death from killers on the threshold of a fortune. Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These radio dramas, a feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon is brought to you by Quaker Oats, the giant of the cereals. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Oats, the giant of the cereals. So long. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>